Okay, so today we're going to continue with area between curves. Uh, yesterday was a very short lecture, just going through the idea of what you need to do and the procedure. So if I give you uh, a few curves, you should then be able to sketch the curves, find the region bounded by them, and then find the area of that region. Okay, so yesterday was just a very short introduction to get you um, uh, introduced to, to that idea. Okay, but today we're gonna be looking at some more examples. Okay, and I'm gonna go through these um, a lot slower than yesterday uh, because we're doing it properly now. Okay, so number one, we're given two curves. Y is equal to X squared and y is equal to 2x minus x squared. Okay, so that's what's gonna be given in your test. You're given two curves. The first thing you need to do is sketch these curves. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, the first one, that's easy to sketch. That's just a happy face quadratic. Um, I'm sure you've done that plenty of times. The second one, um, a bit more difficult to sketch, but it's very nice because this can be factored easily. So if we look at the x-intercepts, we're gonna have zero is equal to two x minus x squared. We can factor out an x. So we get x two minus x. So this gives us two x-intercepts of x equals zero and x equals two. So we're going to have one intercept here and another intercept over here. Okay, so it's a sad face parabola because the coefficient of x squared is negative. So it's going to look something like this. Okay, so that's a rough sketch of what's going on. And we want this area inside here. We want to work that area out. So to do that, we need to look for this intercept here. That's the one crossing point. And this intercept here that is the other crossing point. Okay, because that is the bound of this region. Okay, it goes from that point to that point. How do we find those two? Well, we need to make the two curves equal. So let's do that. So we're going to have x squared is equal to 2x minus x squared. Okay, that's how we're gonna find the two intercepts. So let's do that. So if we take um, everything over, we're going to have 2x squared minus 2x is equal to zero. We can factor out 2x. So we're gonna have 2x, x minus one is equal to zero. And this gives us two intercepts. So the first one will be x equals zero. And the second one will be x equals one. Okay, so it's easy to spot that this first one is going to be zero, zero. But that's the first intercept. And the second one, that must be this other one, which is one, one. Okay, so we see that this region here goes between x equals zero and x equals one. That is um, like the width of this region, if we, if we project this. Down. <laughs> Okay, so that gives us the, the width of this region. So we go from one intercept to the other. Okay, so now we would like to find the area. Okay, so the area of this region is then going to be the integral from zero to one. Then we need to take the upper function minus the lower function. So the upper function is going to be 2x minus x squared. And then we need to subtract the lower function, which is going to be x squared and dx. Okay, so this now becomes a straightforward integral. Uh, we've done this so many times before now. Okay, so let's quickly do this. So we have the integral from zero to one, and then this becomes two x minus two x squared dx. So we end up with, um, x, uh, 2 divided by 2 and then plus 1 to the exponent, so it's x squared, uh, plus 1 to the exponent makes it 3, dividing by that makes it 2 thirds, 
x cubed going from zero to one. So this becomes one squared minus two over three times one cubed minus zero squared minus two thirds zero cubed. Okay, but that term is just zero. So we end up with one minus two thirds and that gives us one third. Okay, so that's the area um, highlighted in yellow there. Okay, so it's one third, um, whatever the units are. I I'm not too worried about that. So as long as you get one third, um, I'm happy. Um, sometimes you'll see in the textbooks or online that they put units squared, but um, I'm not too worried about that. Okay, the only place where I'm worried about units um, is when we did the net change theorem because that's dealing with rates of change um, of quantities and those quantities have units. So uh, that's where I'm more worried. But over here, one third, I'm happy with that. Okay, um, are there any questions about this example? Okay, so um, as you can see, the only new stuff that we're looking at is just this top bit where we are finding intercepts and finding the width of the interval and all of that. Um, everything after that is just a simple integral. Okay, you've done so many of these now. So it's really not much new. Um, you just need to know how to sketch these curves, how to find the intercepts, um, and that's it. Yeah, that's, that's the only um, difficult part to this. The rest is simple integration. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the next example. So this is example number two, uh, sorry. Number two. Okay, so we're given y is equal to x and y is equal to x squared. Okay, again, two very simple things. So let's draw these two and figure out what is the bounded region. So y equals x, that's easy to draw. That's just a straight line through the origin. y equals x squared, that's going to just be a nice simple uh, parabola. Okay, so now we need to look at this picture and see where is the bounded region. In other words, if you look at the two curves, they're going to cross each other to enclose some area. Where is that area? Well, that's going to be here. This part highlighted in yellow. Okay, that's the bounded region um, of these two curves. Okay, with that done, we need to find these two intercepts over here and over here, because that is going to give us the width of the, um, this interval here. Okay, so that's our X interval that we need to integrate along. Okay, so what do we do? We let the two curves be equal and find the intercepts. So we're going to have X is equal to X squared. Uh, we take everything across to one side x squared minus x is equal to zero. We can factor out an x. So we have x minus one is equal to zero. Uh, this gives us two intercepts, which is what we wanted. So we have x is equal to zero and x is equal, sorry, let's rewrite that. x is equal to zero or x is equal to one. Okay, so just by inspection, we can see which one is which. Um, the one on the left is going to be zero, zero. The one on the right is going to be one, one. Okay, so we know that our X interval goes between X is equal to zero and X is equal to one. Okay, so that's our X interval, which makes it the bounds for integration. Okay, so let's find the area now. So the area is equal to the integral from zero to one, we need to take the upper function, that's this top one, that's going to be x, minus the lower function, 
that's this one here, that's going to be x squared. dx. Okay, so after all of that work is done, we are back to a very simple integral to do. So this is equal to the integral from zero to one, x minus x squared. Don't worry about the brackets there. So then this is going to be uh, one half x squared minus one third x cubed from zero to one. Okay, so again, uh, we don't have to worry about the lower bound because that's just going to give us zero. So we're only interested in the upper bound. So that's one half minus one third. So that's going to be three over six minus two over six. If we find the common denominator, so that's going to be one over six. And you can write units squared if you want to, but um, you don't need to. Okay, so from now on, I'm going to just leave out units squared. Okay, but if you want to write it, you can write it. Um, it's not going to be for marks. Okay, uh, let's go back to the picture here. Okay, so we've got the area of that yellow um, segment over there. Um, are there any questions so far? Okay, so you see it's really, um, really not too bad. Okay, uh, let's take a look at something a bit more difficult. Okay, so we are on number three. Yeah, so we're given some curves. Y is equal to one half X and Y is equal to uh, root X and x equals nine. Okay, so please note, we are given three curves. Okay, so we're looking for the area that is bounded by all three of them. Okay, not just two of them, we've got a third one that we need to now consider. Okay, so let's do a sketch. Yeah, so we've got our x, y axes, uh, y equals one half x. That's easy. That's just a little something that looks like a line that's like that. So y equals one half x. Y equals root x. That is something like this. Okay, and lastly, x equals nine. Um, let's just see if I can move this label up a bit. Oh, sorry, just need to redraw this. Okay, and then over here, x equals nine. Okay, so I've got all three curves uh, drawn. So now we want to find the intersection between all of them. So that's going to be this section over here. Okay, because that is the region bounded by root x and one half x. And that's going to be this little um, sort of triangle piece over here. Because again, that is bounded by this bit, this bit, and this bit. You see how the, the three lines uh, make a, a border around that. So we've got like this bit over here and we've got this bit over here and that also makes a border. Okay, so then those borders enclose a region. Uh, that's the region that we're interested in. Okay, so let's just rub that out. We don't need that. Okay, um, is there anyone that's not following with what I just did? Okay, so everyone, everyone gets the idea of um, the curves make a border and we're looking at the region inside. Okay, so now we need to find all the intercepts. So this first one here is the intercept between one half X and root X. That's just going to be zero, zero. 
this intercept here, this middle one, is going to be at 4, 2. Okay, because that's where those two are equal. Because the square root of 4 is 2, and 1 half of 4 is 2. So that's where they're equal. Um, and then this last bit over here, we've already said x equals 9. So that's this bit. Sorry. That's this bit over here. Okay, so we've got everything labeled. So now we can find the area. So let's just leave the diagram there so we can use that. So the area is equal to, now we need to be very careful because this is split up into two parts. Okay, so we'll, uh, I'll explain that now. So the first part is going to be the integral from zero to four. That is this section. Okay, so what is the upper function? The upper function is going to be root x. That's this over here. What is the lower function? That is going to be 1 half x. Plus, now we need to look at this next portion over here. That is going to be from 4 up to 9. But now, the reason we split it is because the upper function is no longer root x. It is now 1 half x. We've got a new upper function and a new lower function. They have swapped. So the upper function is now 1 half x minus the lower function, which is root x. So you see why we had to split this into two parts. Okay, so. Um, the first part is when root x is the upper function, and the second part is where one half x is the upper function. Okay, so we did that by inspection, but you could have also done, uh, like I said in the previous lecture, the absolute value of root x minus one half x. Okay, so we're looking at the absolute value of that. That gets split into two parts. It's going to be root x minus one half x. Uh, where is it going to be that? It's going to be that between zero and four, if you do the calculation. And then it needs to swap around because of the minus sign. We get one half x minus root x. Uh, where is it going to be this? It's going to be between four, sorry, between four and nine. So you can either do it um, using the calculation here, okay, or you can do it by looking at the graph. Okay, so we can see from the graph that the upper function and the lower function swap roles after you move past four, or you could do the long calculation on the side um, and you'll get the same answer. Okay, so whatever you do, um, as long as you know that you need to split this up into two parts. Okay, so now that we've split it up into two parts, uh, we can then do each part separately. So this first part, we're going to get two thirds x to the three over two minus one quarter x squared from zero to four plus, and then for the next part, we're going to get one quarter x squared minus two thirds x to the three over two. And this is now going between four and nine. Okay, so that was just straightforward integration. Um, we've done that before. Okay, so this is going to be two thirds, four to the three over two minus one quarter four squared. Um, if you substitute zero, you're going to get zero. So let's not worry about that. Okay, and then for the next one, we're going to get one quarter nine squared minus two thirds nine to the three over two. Yeah, and then we need a minus for the lower bound. That's going to be minus one quarter four squared uh, minus two thirds four to the three over two. Okay. So if you work this all out, you do your um, exponents and simplifying, uh, we end up with 59 over 12.
Okay, that's going to be the area um, of that yellow part. Okay, uh, that's this part over there. Okay, so um, please just from this example, uh, please remember that if you draw the, the picture, okay, which you are required to do in the test, just to show your, um, just to show what the area looks like, um, please just notice that if the upper the upper function and the lower function switch roles, like we have here, so root x was uh, at the top, now it's at the bottom, then you need two integrals. Yeah. So an integral per section um, of the area. Okay. Um, are there any questions on this one? Okay, so this is now at some test level. Okay, so in your uh, test two coming up, this is uh, something that you should expect. Okay, where the area uh, comes in two separate parts, unlike the previous examples where there was just one part. Okay, uh, last example for today, example four. Uh, yes, you got a question? Um, hello, sir. Hi, yeah. Um, can, um, can you please show me how you got um, the coordinates for this to two? Uh, oops, I'm just zooming here. The middle coordinates? Yes. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, so remember that is where the two functions cross each other. So we're going to have root x is equal to uh, one half x, we're going to square both sides. So we get x is equal to one quarter x squared. Okay, so we can take that across. So we get zero is equal to one quarter x squared minus x. Uh, we can times by four. So we get x squared minus four x. Factor out um, an x. So we get x minus four. This gives us x equals zero or x equals four. So x equals zero, that's the, the first one that we found here. And x equals four, that's this one over here. Okay, um, does that answer your question? Yes, it does very clearly. Okay, awesome. Okay, um, so then that's the, the two intercepts that, that we drew there. Okay, uh, let's take a look at this last question, question four. Okay, so this is like the, the most difficult thing that you're going to get. Okay, so we're given three curves again. Y is equal to two X squared y is equal to one quarter x squared, and y is equal to three minus x. Again, we are given three curves. Okay, so let's just draw a little sketch of what's going on. Okay, remember your sketch doesn't have to be accurate. It's just showing you where the area is and where the intercepts are. Okay, so you don't have to like measure anything out, just a rough sketch will do. Okay, so the first one is y equals 2x squared. Um, that's going to look something like this. y equals 1 quarter x squared. Uh, it's also a parabola, but since the coefficient is a quarter, it's going to be more open. So it's going to be something like that. Okay, it's more open up. And then y equals 3 minus x. Um, the slope is negative. It's been shifted up, so it's going to look something like that. Okay, so you see, I didn't measure anything. It's just a very rough sketch because the only thing I'm interested in is these intercepts over here. Okay, and the shape of the area. That's this part over here. Okay, so remember when you're doing this in the tutorial test or the test two, 
please make sure you shade in the area or highlight the area just so that I can see um, you know, what you're working with. I, I need to be able to see that you've um, colored in the area somehow. Okay, so we've got our three, shape, uh, three curves. This is two X squared, one quarter X squared, and three minus X, that's for the line. Okay, so let's find out what these intercepts are. So let's do the first one right at the top. That is the intercept between three minus X and two X squared. Okay, so we're looking at, uh, just highlight that, that intercept over there. Okay, so if we do three minus X is equal to two X squared, um, we're running out of time now, so I'll leave that for homework, but we end up with X equals one. So this point over here is going to be one comma two. Okay, and then this intercept over here will then be the intercept between the line and the second parabola. So we're gonna have three minus X is equal to one quarter X squared. And I'm gonna leave that for homework. You're going to get X equals two. So this point is going to be two comma one. Okay, and then this one here is just zero zero because it goes through the origin. Okay, so let me just put here, this is homework to find those intercepts. Okay, so let's just take a look at this. This is a bit difficult, okay? Because we see that we have two upper functions. The two X squared, uh, let's just put that in, in red here. Two X squared is the upper function along this line. Okay, I'm putting that in, in red. So that's the upper function there. Um, I'll put the lower function in green. So that's green there. Um, and then after the point one comma two, this becomes the upper function. Okay. So we've got two upper functions on the left and the right of that point and one quarter X squared, that is the lower function all the way through. Okay, um, are there any questions about that? Okay, does everyone see that the red line and the blue line are the upper functions and the green line is the lower function? Everyone okay with that? Okay, um, so let's now find the area. So just from this drawing, we see that this is now split into two parts. So just draw a dotted line here. That's X equals one. So we are doing this in two parts. The first part is where the red is the upper function and green is the lower function. And we have the second part where blue is the upper function and green is the lower function. Okay, so there's two parts to the area. So we're gonna have two integrals that we're gonna to have to add together. Okay, so let's do that. So the area is equal to the integral from zero to one. That is going to be this first part over here. Okay, so the upper function is the red line, which is two X squared. The lower function is the green line, which is one quarter X squared dx. Okay, so that's the first part. Then we have to add the second part where the blue line is now the upper function. So now we're going from one to two, that is this part. Okay, from one to two, the blue line is the upper function. So that's three minus X minus the lower function is still the green line. So that's one quarter X squared dx. Okay, so we've got the two parts. So I've labeled there one and two. So this is one and this is two. Okay, so let's do the first one. This is going to be the integral from zero to one of seven over four X squared. Just simplifying that, 
plus the integral from one to two of three minus x minus one quarter x squared. Okay, I can't simplify that anymore. Okay, so let's do the integral. We add one to the exponent to make it three, divide by three, which makes that 12. So we have seven over 12 x cubed from zero to one, plus uh, we're gonna have three x minus one half x squared minus, again, we add one to the exponent to make it three, divide by three, that makes it 12. And this goes from one to two. Okay, so now we substitute in one. So that's gonna give us seven over 12 plus, now we need to substitute two. So we're gonna have three times two minus one half two squared minus one twelve two cubed uh, minus, now we have the lower bound. So that's three times one minus one half one squared. Um, oops, sorry, that's a minus minus one twelve one cubed. Okay, so we just have to add all of this together. Um, it's pretty, pretty easy. We just have the common denominator of uh, 12. Um, and then after simplifying your fraction, we end up with 11 over two. Okay, so you can, you can check this out as well. Um, I'll put that for homework. Okay, just check that that gives us 11 over two. Okay, um, are there any questions about this one? Okay, so just to emphasize that again, um, with questions like this, whenever the upper function or the lower function changes, so here we see that the upper function changed from the red line to the blue line, we have that change going on, which means we have to split this into two integrals. So we have one integral for the red line and another integral for the blue line, and we add that together. And please note the bounds of integration. The red line goes from zero to one. So let's put that in red. The red line goes from zero to one, and the blue line goes from one to two, from one to two. That is the blue line. Okay, and then the rest is just normal integration. There's nothing, uh, there's nothing new there. Okay, so uh, just to keep you updated with that, um, the integration techniques and all of that, we nothing new there. Uh, we're only going to do something new right at the end of the three weeks when we do integration by parts. Okay, that's the only new um, integration technique that we're going to see. But all of this integral stuff for um, finding areas, finding volumes, all of those integrals we have covered before. Okay, there's nothing new um, with that part. Okay, so calculating the area, there's nothing new there. The only new thing um, is sketching the region, finding the intercepts, and finding which is the upper function, which is the lower function. Okay, that's the only new stuff we're doing. Okay, um, are there any questions on, um, on this example? Okay, um, so that's it for finding the area between curves. So um, for your tests and stuff, you know, nothing more difficult uh, then this last question we have here. Okay, it's very, very simple stuff. Okay, so in your tutorial four, there are, I think, 10 questions on this. Okay, they're all very similar, but it's good practice to go through. Then next week, Wednesday, you will have a multiple choice tutorial quiz on finding the area between curves and a bit more integration, just to um, give you some practice. Okay, so that will be next week, Wednesday. Okay, and uh, remember before the tutorial quiz, we do have a tutorial session, uh, but this time the tutors are going to take it. Okay, so they will be um, taking the session sessions from now on.
Okay, but I will be there um, in case you need help with that. Okay, so everyone, uh, please enjoy your weekend. Make sure you go through the uh, tutorial um, and I'll see all of you on Monday. Yeah, bye everyone.